Hey everyone, I want to share with you today um, a technique that I think is really, really, really helpful and it took me quite a long time to figure out in three steps how to really simplify this and I'm talking about shading like for example what you see here so this started as a first wash and then I came in with darker colors or more uh, concentrated pigment to negative paint these areas of shadows and this is a very common technique in watercolors and I think it's sometimes very challenging to get it right because many times you have too much water not enough water too much pigment not enough pigment so I want to kind of walk you through my three steps and I hope this will help you with um, getting with making this a little bit easier um, if you like this video then consider giving it a thumbs up and of course subscribe let's get started I have here this older playtime little floral thing going on and I'll just zoom you a little bit out that I made probably <laughs> two years ago anyway it's not important what is important is that I don't exactly remember the colors I used here and ideally you would want to use the same kind of limited amount of colors in your painting it just helps keep things more um, harmonious when you don't introduce new paints all the time but uh, for the sake of this exercise we're gonna stay with this so the biggest challenge here is to get the right amount of water and pigment on your brush I'm using this is the Paul Rubens uh, number 10 round pointed brush this is a natural hair brush but anything similar would work and I just for me the best shape that has worked for me is the round one so what we're going to do now is we're going to load our brush with our shadow color and I think here I'm going to use uh, a turquoise because it's dark and intense and again it's not ideal because I don't remember the colors I used so I have here my uh, half pan set and this particular turquoise is called Helio turquoise from Schmincke it's beautiful it's very intense uh, it's also a single pigment turquoise which is hard to find I mean the uh, common ones you see are like phthalo turquoise and there are usually two pigments but this one is a single one so step one you want to load your brush with the uh, pigment and you can see that mine is really holding its shape and it is not dripping at all so the color here is quite intense and if you have like a drop of water or you see that your tip is very uh, thick or that it looks like it has a lot of water then you can absorb a little bit of the water and start again so we're going to draw a line and I'm just going to make like a little leafy shape So this is our line and you can see it's very intense. This is step one. Step two is I'm going to use my brush to help me get a really nice blend. So my brush is naturally because of the way that you know water and pigment works has more pigment here and then the amount of pigment just reduces as you go closer to the barrel so I'm going to just place my brush on the side and tap 
and you can see I'm not doing anything the brush is doing this blend so super easy don't do that <laughs> and we're already halfway there now we're going to clean our brush completely and the next thing is you don't want it again you don't want it dripping wet because when you introduce so much water the pigment starts to move around you get blooms that's fine but we want that smooth blend so I wiped away most of the water and now I just have a little bit and I can pull pull not pull pull the color and again I'm going to get clean water and wipe away most of the water and continue blending away to get that soft blend and I can help move the color a little bit but when you at this point if you come with a dripping brush then you get in trouble because you get your water runs all around and it's just a mess and at this point I can add some more colors if I want to again you want your brush not to be dripping wet that's what I found is really uh, crucial to me to get that nice gradient from deep color to light one and not just another wash of soft color soft color is great but here we're going for contrast and shadows so I'm just blending the edges I don't want any hard edges and I'm going to do another kind of close that leaf shape again I'm going to go into my, my turquoise and make sure that my brush is loaded with a lot of juicy pigment very pointed that means that there's not a lot of water and I'm going to do this just to make things a little bit more interesting I'm not going to draw the whole line so step number one I'm not um, washing not cleaning my brush yet using the side to get that gradient now I'm going to clean my brush wipe away most of the water and blend it out if you want those brush marks you need a drier brush I really like to get them every now and then and if you don't want them then just get a little bit more water on your brush and blend away and then you can really control how blended you want it to be you don't have to go all the way to the edge you want to keep that a bit dark or if you don't want you can take a little bit of water a bit of wetter brush and add some water and then you'll get a softer blend and again I can load my brush with something like some green gold and add a little bit of that into my shadows and I see that I used green gold in this painting so that helps unify the look that I'm getting and if I want I can come again with a clean brush not a dripping brush in these layers if you come in with a lot of water it, it starts to move around the paint and it's just this is the stage where I like to have a little bit more control so just very delicately I'm pulling you can see I'm coming from the edges and then just gently touch certain areas of that border and I think this gives the whole thing a more um, a little bit a more realistic look when that edge is not so super super um, intense 
and and here I don't want the flower to have that so I'm gonna clean that up and that's it and we got this really beautiful blend as I said if you want some brush marks which I really love then you keep your brush even drier but for that smooth intense blend follow these steps let's do another one here we're kind of we're going to um, imagine the edge of this flower so I'm going to take I'm going to search for a strong pink in my palette I think this one is I think it'll be intense enough let's just test it hmm I think that would work and then we can add a bit more color to it if we want so again I'm taking my time to load my brush with pigment it's not dripping it's moist but not dripping so I'm working here and this I also find this is a bit easier to do with um, either watercolors in pan or dried watercolor if you're using like really fresh freshly squeezed paint it can get a little bit harder to control it um, and not to get like a ton of pigment so this time we're just imagining here the edge and see this is I can see because I got this little bead here you see that that I have a bit too much water on my brush so I'm just gently going to tap some of it off and go back to my pan maybe mix a bit these two pinks colors are really insignificant at this point and let's see okay so this is better I can already see that there's like less water and I'm just going to make a little edge I am really a fan of suggestive painting I don't want to give away all the details so step number one I created my line step number two lay my brush on the side and you can already see the nice gradient and blend that I got here now I'm going to wash it dab most of the water and blend pull that color away and you can see that my brush now is rather dry and I really like these brush marks if you don't want them this is also rough paper so it's easier to get that texture if you don't want them then you can uh, use a slightly wetter brush but you really don't want your brush to be soaking wet also it might be I love using large brushes but maybe for these areas it would be easier to use a bit of smaller brush I mean this is a number 10 it's not tiny but this is also like a relatively large painting and to make this a little bit more interesting this shadow I do like the way that it looks I'm going to just grab a little bit of this is Indian yellow from my palette if I'm not mistaken this is a core paint so it might <laughs> run like make create havoc on our wash you can see how it takes over so I'm putting it a bit further away to be able to control it but it's just I really like to add colors also into my shadows and get a bit more variation and I'm going to take the brush on its side and add a few more strokes and again what I'm going to do I mean this line is so sharp I don't want it that sharp so again I clean my brush I'm wiping away most of the water and now I'm going to just go in sorry my angle is a little bit awkward just wet the area and then slowly nudge that line and 
I have then a lot of control to decide how much I want to bring that in. Because I used such um, heavy pigmented and relatively like almost dry brush, you can see the the dark paint is not just running in. If this was very wet and then I came here with some more water, this was just flow in. But because there is so much pigment and little water, I get more control. And at this stage of my painting, that's what I want and that's what I like. Hey there, so at this point I got lost in my own painting and basically I kept uh, doing the same thing with those exact three steps that I showed you, but since it's just uh, repetitive, I thought I could speed it up and uh, do a voiceover instead. So sorry, this is a little bit out of frame, but yeah, I really enjoyed uh, working with this painting. It's actually, as I said, it's something that I just scribbled uh, I don't know, more than a year ago, I have to say, and I probably wouldn't have come back to it if it wasn't for uh, wanting to do this video tutorial, but I did uh, really enjoy it. So just adding another uh, line there, and I will add at the end uh, a photo of how the whole thing looked. Um, I think I'm done with it. I don't know what I will do with it. It's right now in my ginormous Cuddy uh, sketchbook, which as soon as I'm done with it, I only have like two more pages to go. I will definitely do a flip through video for you. I think this would, would will be fun because um, I started this journal in a completely different place in my watercolor journey than... Um, how I progressed and ended it. So I think it will be fun to look through it. So now I'm going back to that area that I started with and I want to add some more shading there because, you know, that leaf is, it looks like it's just coming out right out of like that petal. There's no depth there. There's no nothing. So I definitely feel it needs more. And um, basically, I'm kind of layering the colors kind of that are already there, but just going with a more uh, heavy or more pigmented application of them. And because watercolors are transparent or the ones that I'm using here are transparent, you it's like a glaze. So you can still see the, the color that is underneath and that helps to build up the layers. So I dotted in again some of that yellow and now I wanted to add uh, um, a border there and I actually do end up adding something there but I wasn't sure about the composition so I decided to um, go down to this corner and I'm just showing you with my hand. <laughs> I'm trying to explain that the composition is in a way that it, it has like this movement across this diagonal and um, there's a lot of those kind of directional brush strokes on the other side and nothing here. So in order to balance the painting, I am adding some more here. And I don't have a lot to work on because my background is very uh, minimal. There are just some very simple green stains there and maybe a couple of those pink ones. So I'm basically free to do what I want. And here I'm just... Uh, varying the color a little bit more from the very beginning. So that also gives me a much more interesting look and it's just really fun to play with this. If you like negative painting then I'm sure you understand just the joy of creating these shapes and shadows and playing with the colors. Um, I, I know for me it's a really fun part of the process. Let me know in the comments if you do negative painting and if you would like to see more videos like this going into techniques. I feel kind of weird because, you know, this channel started as a scrapbooking channel. I think that was pretty much everything that I uploaded in 2014, I think I started. And then I went into mixed media and started doing also art journaling videos. And now I am all in, all into watercolors. 
and I think that's where it's I think I'm here to stay you know I I do enjoy incorporating also other mediums into my uh, watercolor paintings and I definitely uh, enjoy sketching with ink and watercolors like pen and watercolors but uh, I think I think this is the direction so I know for some of you it's disappointing although if you made it this far then I'm guessing you are probably um, more into watercolor than the other things I mentioned um, but yeah you know you have to follow your heart so sorry about the hand movements and um, I really enjoyed making this and I think the finished um, creation is definitely a lot more interesting than it started as and yeah I just had fun thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day bye